Hey everybody, Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. In this video, I teamed up once again with Harrison Peacock of CCS Triangle Electric in Wake Forest, North Carolina. And here, Harrison's gonna demonstrate for us how to install a new GFCI outlet on a new circuit from the panel in a garage. Now, before we get going, two very important things to keep in mind. Number one, Harrison is a professional licensed electrician. This video is for demonstration purposes only. If you are not a licensed electrician, if you're not fully confident in your skills to do this work, please do not tackle this on your own. Certainly don't do it without the supervision of a professional electrician. Any work you undertake is at your own risk. Number two, we did this installation using shielded metal clad cable, the stuff that you see behind me. This isn't something that Harrison typically uses. He doesn't really like this product because it can be hard to make it look good and his work is always of a really high aesthetic professional value. But it's a good budget product, it's code compliant, and we're only in a garage here and aesthetics didn't really matter to us as much. So we did it as a favor. I think it makes a good instructional video because a lot of people in our situation looking to keep costs down, metal clad cable can serve just as well. Thanks for doing it for us, Harrison, and that's what we're gonna show in this video, metal clad cable. Now that said, I'm gonna switch over and let Harrison take the narration from here. This is a longer video. This is a very detailed installation process. So follow along step by step and you're gonna see exactly how this is done by a great professional like Harrison at CCS Triangle Electric. Hey guys, this is Harrison Peacock, uh, the electrician from CCS Triangle, working with The Honest Carpenter. Today we're going to be talking about installing a new circuit in the garage here, new 20 amp circuit for an additional receptacle and changing a light. Now first of all we're going to start at the panel itself here. I'm going to check the brand of panel that's going to be in, um, I'm going to be working from. This particular brand is Eaton, it's a CH so it's good quality. I can see that I have additional spaces so I can add the additional circuit breakers I want. A lot of times when people start to want to add circuits you have to assess the situation. Is the brand of panel I got good condition? Does it have the spaces I need available to do this installation? Am I going to be overloading the panel which can get a little bit too technical and it's not something to worry too much about in dwelling units as long as you don't see any overheating inside of the panel. Okay so first of all we're going to be installing our new circuit. We're going to be using MC wire which we have here. This is rated for surface installation so although this isn't going to be the neatest uh, looking work it is going to be the most cost efficient and the easiest to install. So we've got a wire here that we're going to pull, we're going to install, it's going to be strapped to the ceiling, we're going to go up as straight as possible, along, around the sides here and then we're going to keep going round, we're going to come directly down to our box where we're going to install a GFI rated receptacle as we're in a garage location which requires that it has GFI protection and that it's also a 20 amp circuit, not a 15. First of all, we're gonna open up the panel and we're gonna make sure that the, the inside of it is in good condition and that it's acceptable for us to install an additional circuit. Making sure we've got hold of the panel as we're unscrewing it because this is a metal cover, and we don't want the metal cover inadvertently touching any of the live components inside. Okay. Now as we can see inside, we want to make sure that it's following code, that there are no issues that we can see, that the actual colour of the buzz bar is in good condition, there's no evidence of overheating, we don't see any burning on our neutrals or our grounds, we want to make sure that we don't have double connections on the neutrals which is unacceptable and that our grounds are in good condition. We're also checking as we're going to be installing above here our junction box which our MC will mount into and then our wire will go into the back of that where we install this box, there is no danger of a wire being there for us to drill and hit as we're doing this. Um, a, more, a simpler, easier way to do this would be if all the wires go down, which they don't, unfortunately, they all go from above. So as I do this, I wanna make sure that the screws I use aren't gonna hit any of the wires, that as I go up itself and I install the straps for this wire, that I'm not gonna hit anything existing, and that I'm being safe as possible to make sure that I don't damage any of the existing installation. So I'm just knocking out these parts here. Yep. They come with standard knockouts. We've got half inch, we've got three quarter inch, depending on what you're gonna install or how you're gonna use it. You do have spacing allowances on anything you install in terms of wires. 
Um, we've done our um, spacing calculations and, and we know that we're going to be good on doing 112, um, 120 amp circuit with number 12 wire. So what we've done here is taken the knockout from the above of where the MC wire is going to come out and then we've taken the back out of where it's going to go into the panel itself. Then I'm going to take my marker. I've taken a look at the wires here. So as we can see, there's a lot being used on this side and there's less this, so I've got a small space here that I'm gonna to select to put my box above so that we give ourselves a good amount of space for pulling the additional wire. So I'm just gonna line up this hole here with the hole that I intend to use below. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give myself a good amount of space because the lip of the panel is gonna come about here, so we don't wanna get it too close. I'm just gonna mark where it's gonna go. I'm going to give myself a mark of where I'm going to install my sheetrock screws and then we're going to be good to go. Of where we're going to be putting our hole here, we don't really want to be drilling because if we slip and go through we can hit one of the existing wires and it can go the way that we don't want it to. So what we're going to do here is just chisel and hammer, just really lightly give it a tap. Get it just far enough in, give ourselves a twist, and then we've made our hole. Now I need this hole to be big enough to hold my Romex connector, so it needs to be larger than the hole that we've got in our box. Then we're gonna take our Romex connector here, and this I'm gonna screw on, because it's a better connection, you get a better hold, the actual screws work better. Up, screw it on. Now you can do machine screw. I mean, if you want to get a set of grips on there to hold it in, that's fine, but there's no movement there. And then I've got the screws ready as well to hold the Romex on. What we're going to do with this is we're actually going to change it. So we're going to have the MC wire come in from above, and then we're going to have Romex come through and into the panel itself. So we're gonna have connections in here. The reason we're doing that is it's gonna be difficult to get a bend of MC in the short distance that we have. It's gonna be harder to get an MC connector in. Some people, if they wanted to do this quicker or make it not look as quite as attractive, they could just get the MC itself and then poke it in and get it directly through. But it's gonna be hard to make it look neat here to actually seal it round, so we're going with the junction box itself to sit there for the wire to connect into. And then as always, this is slightly bigger, so we just need to make our hole larger so that we can fit the connector through. And now that we've got our initial hole, we can move to our sheetrock knife, pad saw, whatever you want to call it, depending on what country you're in. And again, we're being really light with the way that we're doing this. So we're just using the tip here. You don't want to start shoving the whole thing in because there's wires there, you need to be very careful. A lot of people can use uh, electric tools or they can use skill saws or multi-tools. Personally, I think it's a bit too much power for the situation you're in. I think classic is always the best way to go. You've got a lot more control, a lot less risk of hitting something that is behind this wall in the location that we're working. Where you can see we've got our insulation, you can see we've got a good bit of clearance. We're not touching any wires, we haven't damaged any wires, and we're good to keep moving forward. Now we check and it fits, and we see that the holes that we marked before are still correct. Drywall anchors to make sure that the box gets held in place. So, again, we just apply pressure. If you over tighten those, you'll tear the sheetrock. That'll be the sheetrock broken, and then you've got to relocate where you've done the work. You've got to repair the sheetrock. So you only get one chance. Make sure you do not over tighten because then it's broken, and that's it. You've got to start somewhere else. Yeah. We're going to tap the actual knockout itself. So below here, we see that that's the one we intend to get a wire into. Yeah. 
Obviously we're being very careful. As we zoom out, we see that these parts are live constantly unless we turn the entire panel off, which if you're doing this for yourself, I highly recommend. If you're a skilled person with lots of experience, then you're more comfortable. We're gonna have our screwdriver here, aiming roughly for where we're going for. Screwdriver should be touching where that knockout is. One hit. If you zoom in underneath this, you'll see where we've come through. Then we get our insulated cutters. Pull it off. See it. So with that lovely Romex, uh, plastic Romex connector frustrating me and not going through the way we wanted it to, we're going to change it to metal and get it on. It's going to be a better connection anyway. So. Channel locks? Yes, sir. Good to go. Little wire through. Giving ourselves enough length. The one we strip this, it's going to be enough to go to the ground, to our neutral, and then to the location where we're going to put the circuit breaker into as well. So, we've got plenty of space there. Alright. Cut it ready to go. And we're going to put our connector on here. We're just going to tighten it on the back so that it can't move. Not over tightening it, because if we over tighten it, then we're going to pinch the wires and you're going to create a short, and the circuit breaker is going to do its job and trip, and you're going to wonder why. One of the best calls that I get quite frequently from people is uh, them telling me that their circuit breaker is tripping, they think it's broken, and that it needs to be replaced, when in actuality it's tripped because it's doing its job and it is protecting the circuit. Now, as we're using a metal box, we have to have our ground screw attached to the box itself so that when we do this, even though it's only being used as a junction, we still need to ground it. So we're gonna strip this wire, wrap the ground around it, and then we're gonna connect them together. There's many methods to strip wire. This is my particular favorite. I put a nick into the wire itself here, separated the ground, Attach my cutters, and I put it. Uh, there are lots of different tools you can use, lots of different methods. I know there are certain people who are gonna look at this and call me unprofessional for the way that I've done it, but this is the way I've done it for 17 years. I think you can get uh, tools that make it look a bit neater. I try and keep it as flat as possible, so we're just trimming away there to make sure it's stripped correctly and all the way back. You don't wanna have the second insulation up here. It needs to be stripped right to the back. Then we're going to pull these down. This wire here, we're just going to wrap right around that screw, keeping it nice and tight, not loose. And then we're going to screw it on. So we've got the connection and we're happy with it. And that box is now grounded. So this here is our MC. You can see on their package itself, it says the wire gauge is number 12, which is rated for a 20 amp breaker. If you want to get technical, start talking about 80% or doing your temperature ratings or what the insulation rating is, you can go very much into detail, but we're keeping things simple. Number 12 on a 20 amp breaker for an independent circuit, we're good to go. There are lots of different um, tools you can get out there or pieces of equipment that help run these out where you can sit them and actually roll them out. Me personally, for doing a job such as this. Don't just unwind it such as this and then just start pulling it out. What I will do is get myself one of the lengths, put my foot on here to hold it in place and I will roll it out. 
because the thing with all wires, you want them to be as straight as possible. Any kinks, any twists, their potential for the wires inside of it to twist or to break for the other insulations to snap. Then if they touch, it creates a short, and then the breaker trips, and then you've got more issues. So keeping the wire as straight as possible is the key to making sure that you don't have further issues. And I've got my arms underneath, making sure it doesn't get caught. Now we've got it lovely and coiled out, it's gonna be easier for us to install. So, as we see here, the best way to cut MC itself is you actually take it by the parts, you bend it where you want it, and it will break, as we see there. And then you just give it a pull on the other side, it breaks there, and because it's twisted round, you untwist it to give ourselves an opening. Set of cutters. There are different specific tools that are designed to clamp onto this and cut into it, but we're using simple tools because we're working at home. So we just have our cutters that go into there, which have now broken it, as we see. That slots off. We just want to neaten this up because we've got this sharp bit here. So we're just going to bend it back in, push it, making sure not to clamp too tightly because we don't want to damage the inside wire. And then we're going to put our protector on, which will then make sure that the insulated wires can't be damaged by the outer shell. I've got this protection here, which we'll just cut back to make it neat. And our connector, which we screw on, not too tightly, but tight enough to hold it in place. Now have our wire terminated, our connector on good, our box installed, our hole ready. So we're going to slot this wire itself through. Personally, I want to get the screw front facing. I think it looks neater, more professional. And then we're going to want to put a strap within six inches. Personally, I want to get it as close as possible. So we're going to have the strap there. And again, we're still mounted to sheetrock. So we want to use our sheetrock screws. So I'm just going to punch a small hole through so I know where I need to put the sheetrock connector through. We're going to hang that safely for a second. I'm just going to coil it there so it can't snap, fall out, or get in any way that we want to be nervous about. Got another one of our sheetrock connectors. Perfect level of tightness we want. We don't want to do it too tight or too loose. Then we've got our half inch bushing. So we've got our MC going in, bushing slots onto the wire, screws on. We want to make sure that this is on and in place. I'm going to tighten that up with grips in a second, but for now I want to screw it in place first. Sure we don't over tighten so we've got it in place then we use our channel locks and go back and make sure it's held tightly in place by the bushing yes sir now what we're going to do that we have these in place is we are going to join our wires together now as you see i haven't made the connections in the panel yet this is going to be the last thing that we do because that's going to be the connection to our power itself so we've got our connection in, starting at the panel. We've got our box on. We've got our wire ready to go to our receptacle. We're gonna make our junction here. So we're moving, starting at the panel, moving away from it, but not actually connecting to the panel because we don't want it to have power until the very last moment. It's the last thing that we need as we're doing our installation. Right. We move on to one of the greatest arguments that electricians currently have at the moment is what we terminate our connections with. Uh, personally, today I'll be using wire nuts. These are rated for number 12s. You also have Wagos, and they are a push connection. Personally, I don't like anything that has push connections to them. I don't trust them. Lots of other people will disagree with me and say that I'm wrong. And on this, it is personal opinion. I prefer the machine connection of them being together. Um, the reason I don't like wire nuts is that because I have to twist the wires together, you can damage the integrity of the wire. 
So what we may find when we're doing wire nuts is that if you strip the wire itself a bit too much, with this example we're gonna show you here, and uh, as we start this, making sure any of these terminations should have a minimum of six inches. So we wanna make sure we've got good length. Lots of people will do them way too short. We won't wanna do that. We wanna make sure we've got a good amount of length so we have movement. So I'm gonna give it roughly a little bit over six inches. We're just gonna cut this one here for our example. We're gonna measure our other wire that we're doing together at the same length and cut them together. As we can see, we've got one sheathed and one unsheathed because we're using different wires. And all I'm doing with this, I have my cutters. I'm gonna apply a small amount of pressure to a part, turn it, apply another pressure, turn it, and then move around again. So I've just stripped that and then pull away. Now with wire nuts, a lot of people will just hold them together such as this, add the wire nut and screw on. That's not a thing that we would be doing, not professional, I don't think, personally. Uh, I will be twisting them together with my side cutters. So we're just gonna twist it. And then we can see here that there's different lengths, which will make it harder for the wire nut to connect. So we're just gonna cut them so they're the same length like that. And then we're gonna twist our wire nut on, making sure that it's good. And then you wanna give it a pull on both sides to make sure that it's in there correctly and that connection has been made. That's ground to ground. Do the same again with live and neutral. What's the difference between white and black? <laughs> One hurts a lot more than the other. Okay. <laughs> Neutral is your return, black is your life. So that's uh, your current travels through. You'll be really careful how you say these explanations because people will argue with you constantly. And we love a good argument. <laughs> Electricians are very particular about the correct um, words that we use. So black supplies the power, white takes it away? Exactly, it's your return. But white is grounded conductor, and then black is your live conductor, or phase if you're in England. We've got our connections there neat. That's how you Good like loops on them. That's how we like our boxes. And then we can actually put the blank plate over as we've done our connections. So one of the um uh, issues with MC, well not really an issue, in terms of aesthetics and making it look attractive, the way that it is, it's very flimsy, it's very flexible, so it's difficult to make it look straight, to make it look attractive and neat. That's why personally I'd rather be doing this in PVC conduit, but this is the simplest, easiest thing to do, so we're just doing a demonstration on how to use MC today. And as you can see here, the um, actual paint itself, MC you have to be very careful with, because it will strip the paint carefully. Uh, quite easily, apologies for the wrong words there. So this is gonna cover it. The only reason we mention this now is if you for some reason knock this against the wall or you pull it against something, it will strip all the paint. The actual metal color itself will rub off on things. So be careful as you're doing this installation that you don't create issues where you make marks that you then have to paint over. So we're gonna be really anally retentive and say we've done it three and a quarter inches. We want to do three and a quarter at the top. And then we measure our difference to make it look beautiful. Let's see, we've got 29 and a half, which we divide by two. Yeah. A strap in place where we've marked it. Now we've got the issue of trying to curve it, make it look neat and keep it straight. And now that we're up high, we don't need our sheetrock screws anymore because we have the stud to screw into and we're gonna screw around. Yeah. So we're done with using our sheetrock screws, we can go direct, directly just to straight yeah. screwing. I'm gonna follow the top plate here. Yeah. Yeah. 
So what I did was, I just applied my finger here, bent one part there, moved my finger there, bent another part, moved my finger across to two more, bent again, to give us that better bending radius, because we don't want it to be too sharp to avoid kinks as well. As we can see here, we've got a slight dip. What we're doing is we're doing these, um, each connection, each strap that we install, we're holding the wire and we're pulling it, not super tight, not really hard, but we're giving it some tension, so that when you put the next strap in, it's being held tight as possible. Otherwise, you're going to have lots of loose dips yeah, yeah. Um, as we're doing it through. So now we're coming back onto the wall. We need our sheetrock drywall screws. So we're just going to get some more of those. Uh -huh. Table. I'm just going to do a marking of 13. Then add our box. Give us the height we want. And now we've got our wire installed. We're just going to see roughly where it goes to. I've got my finger there on my measurement. So that's the length I want the connector to come to. Yep. I'm going to give myself eight to nine inches of additional wire. I'm going to break it like I did before. Twist and pull. Now I'm just going to cut it there. So um, we haven't put any straps into the actual wall itself yet. What we're going to do is um, we're going to terminate the wire, mount it to the box, screw that to the wall and then we're going to strap what's left because we can lose a little bit of the um, movement that we have here up the wall to try and keep it straight and we want to make sure that the actual connection to the box is solid and tight. So we've got our measurement here, that's going to be my mark there. I'm going to move it around there, to the back, making sure I don't cut any of my insulators. Very neat, so we're going to strip a bit more of that. Slot our protector on. There's lots of different names for these things, so I'm trying to keep it as vague as possible so we uh, yeah. avoid the negative comments. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Getting our bushing on. Slot our connector over. And you see how we've got our rear coming through there, so yeah. we know that it's mounted tightly and on. All right. Again, not too loose. But not too tight. And if you see here, you see it pushing against yep, it, yep. holding place. A little tensioner screw. Exactly, but we can see that the actual metal itself hasn't like pushed in. Punctured it's just held in place, exactly. Right. And then we're gonna look at our box. If we're gonna get real personal, I like to have the um, ground connection where we're gonna put a screw for um, protecting the box bottom left, but We've got a three quarter inch hole there, so I'm gonna to have to turn it over. Uh, let's do it to this one here. Okay. So now it's gonna to be top left like before. I'm gonna get our tool here, tap in there. So we get a slight yep. break, push in, twist off and it's out. Slot on, push in, get our bush. Screw facing out, so it looks neat and professional. And mark our holes. We want to make sure that wherever we're mounting these two, if we're using these drywall screws, that there isn't wood in the way because otherwise they're not going to mount in and terminate correctly. They're just going to come out, the sheetrock's going to bust, and you're not going to need these because there's wood behind. We can see it's more than likely there's a stud here, yeah. or this might just be from where a shelf was installed yeah, before. Right. If you have a stud finder and you want to mount the box to a stud, it's going to give you a better solid connection mounting it in terms of the screws you're using. But we're still going to go with drywall um, anchors today. Just like before, we're using a metal box, um, and what we need to do is make sure that this stays grounded. So what I'm going to do here is just give myself a little bit of a coil. I'm going to measure where I want to wrap this. Obviously, it's insulated, 
So I'm just going to strip some of it out. Does that look like it's enough? I think touch more. You're just raking the knife up the Exactly. Wire. Make sure you don't do it too hard. You don't push too hard and actually nick or damage the copper itself. You just want to get rid of the insulation. Yes. So it's very easy to get excited. Maybe you've got brand new tools that are a little bit too sharp. You don't want to damage the copper because if you do put an indent on the copper and then you bend it too much, the thing will just snap and you'll have to rework it. So that's it there. And that round. And make sure we've got our six inches. I want it to be the similar length. And we're gonna strip our wires. Now, well, as we can see here on the back of this particular GFI, it has line side and it has loan side. Now load side is if you decide that you're going to install more than one receptacle protected by this particular GFI. We're only doing this as a dedicated circuit, so we're going to put our live into our hot there, black into hot where it says hot, white into white where it says white, and then our one ground into there with our green screw. Gotcha. And you said you need at least one GFI in the garage? Correct. Online. Well, every uh, receptacle, yes. So they all have to be GFI protected in the garage, kitchen, bathrooms, anywhere that's considered a wet location, outside. You can have one GFI receptacle that can protect all of them, which you'll find on new builds. Personally, I'm not a fan of that for multiple reasons. If everything is protected by one GFI receptacle and you have any issues where something starts to trip, that one GFI is going to trip and you're not going to know what's causing it to trip. With older houses, a service that I personally offer is replacing receptacles and altering circuits so that you have multiple GFI receptacles in these different locations so that if something's plugged into it that's causing it to trip, it only trips that one receptacle rather than losing power to everything else. Okay. So that's one of the things that I recommend in a service that I actually provide. Okay. Want to make sure that we don't lose these little bits and they don't go everywhere. Electricians have a reputation of not cleaning up after themselves, so I like to make sure that I keep all of mine together so that I can throw them away later on. Now you see the length that we've stripped it to. We want to make sure that when we're installing this, there is no exposed copper. So if you strip too much and you see exposed copper there, that's not good. It means it can touch something else, it can spark, it can cause a short, and then it will trip. You want to strip it just enough that when you poke it in, there is no exposed copper whatsoever. You want to tighten it, as good connection as well. And then make sure you can pull it and it doesn't come out. Sometimes it will be a bit loose, sometimes you might have made a mistake. You always want to give it a tug to make sure it can't come out. And don't be afraid to give it a tug to make sure as well. And then we're going to do the same with our neutral or ungrounded conductor. On the side it says white. Exactly. Normally you'll find that the white and the green are next to each other and the black are further away. So you see how we've got our green there next to our white and then our black's further away. Yeah. What um, other people also do quite frequently is that they'll buy one brand of GFI that has them one way and then they try and do things exactly the same rather than read the instructions on the back and then it doesn't work because they put the main power or the line side into the load which means it doesn't work correctly and then I get a call to come and fix it. Gotcha. So another thing to be aware of. So yeah. check your brand and check your brand. At the exactly, okay. correct. And I'm going to do this upside down because we have this little bit here yeah. and we want to make gravity our friend and keep it down so that it slots in to get the ground in and then I'm going to twist it so now it's slotted in and you want to make sure it's a solid tight connection. Lovely. And we've got our face plate. 
And then we're gonna use these screws to mount it to this plate. So we need to remove the existing screws that it was supplied with. And also, these come as standard to go inside, and this metal plate here is actually gonna stick over it. So we have to do a little bit of modification. If you zoom in here, you see these little brakes here? Yep. They can actually be bent off. So we're just gonna twist, 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 and it comes off. Because they'll get in the way. Exactly, and the plate won't go on properly. Gotcha. And then the top parts as well. Gotcha. And now we'll sit incorrectly. It's got a nut on the back. Mm -hmm. It's a little bolt. The ones that named it the Sawzall. So I've got my finger on the back holding the nut in place. Okay. As I just do this. If you want to get very particular, which a lot of electricians do, we want to make sure that the uh, screw is facing upwards and not flat. If you're in England, they want it flat, but if you're in America, they want it up. And what's the purpose? Just aesthetics? Just aesthetics. Right. It's uh, something people are very particular about. It's things that electricians love to argue about. So that's on there solid. Screw off. Screw off. And see what we've done here as well, if you turn to the side, we bent the wires to make sure that they were going. Yep. We wanna make sure that the green is clear of the white and the black. I want to make sure we've still got solid connections. And the wire is physically clear? Yep, yeah, and then nothing's being pinched. Gotcha. If we have anything pinching, it will short, and then we have issues as well. Gotcha. And then we're just going to screw it on. And we are installed. Now all we've got left to do is connect up in the panel put our circuit breaker in, turn it on, test to make sure it works. Okay, so now what we need to do is connect our wire, now that we've done everything else, into the panel itself. So again, using the same trick that I used before, one into the middle, pull our ground wire out. Fingers, hold on, pull up. Making sure to be very careful not to touch any live components inside the panel. I don't know why there is paper inside of this wire, a thing that conducts heat and electricity, but apparently there needs to be, so we have to be careful to make sure that goes out of the way. Strip our conductors. And there we have it. Then we're going to start with our ground wire first. Now, as you can see, the person who did this panel had it all lovely and neat. And so I want to try and keep it similar as much as possible. You don't need to do this. This is just me being anal. What I'm going to do is just measure it. So I'm going to point a finger up to the top here and I'm going to measure it down. Then I'm going to see where the screw I want to go is. So I'm going to put a kick in it. Then I'm going to measure it slightly and I'm being really careful to make sure that as this comes here, I'm not touching the live components, which are just inches away right there. Now I've got my measurement. I'm going to cut for where I want it to be. Get rid of my excess. I'm going to pull that kink back out just for a second. So it's straight and then I'm going to fish it behind the other wires. You don't have to do this but I would like to, so it looks somewhat neater. It's 
So what kind of voltage is running through the live wires? Here? We have 120 volts and 240. So we have phase A and phase B. Across them is 240. From each one to our grounded or our ground conductors is 120 volts. They say you know how good an electrician is by the last time they were electrocuted. And uh, I can say quite proud that I don't remember the last time I got a shock. So the secret to that is whenever you're working on anything, always make sure you've got your tester. Don't trust it too much. Just check your power to make sure when you're working on things it's live. And then once you want to do is check to make sure. Even if it comes off, even if you test something and it says it's off, you need a known power supply to test it against to make sure that this is telling you the truth. Now that we've got our wire for the ground pulled through, it's hidden, I can put my kink back into it and then I can push it through. I want to make sure that I'm not pushing way too much through here, so I've just got the tiniest little bit on the other side to see it through. I'm going to hold it in place and I'm going to do it as tight as I can. And then I want to give it a pull to make sure it's not loose, which it isn't. We've got our this particular panel here, if you want to zoom out a touch, we have our neutrals or our grounded conductor and our, our grounds separate. What you can find in other panels, depending, is where these are actually joined together in the same bar. Yeah. So knowing your panel is very important. If you feel uncomfortable, if you are not sure what's going on, always call a licensed contractor. Don't do things that you're not sure or confident on. Um, and just make sure that you're staying safe as well. There are a lot of codes when it comes to panels. Some panels are allowed to have your neutrals and your grounds together if the meter base is within five feet or if it's back to back. <clears throat> they, we can get into some very complicated code details quite quickly. So just make sure that when you're doing this, you're staying safe. You can touch anything on the ground here or um, grounded, but don't touch the bar with the breakers, that will always be live. Okay, so now we've got our ground in. We're gonna push these very live wires very gently to make sure that we don't break the insulation and give ourselves the shock. And again, I'm just gonna put my wire up, measure it roughly so that it's similar to what I already have. Measure it to where I'm comfortable. Cut my excess and then again me personally I'm just gonna pull it behind these wires here so I would suggest if you're gonna play with wires such as this that you turn these circuits off I'm not doing that at the moment so try not to judge me too badly and I'm gonna strip my wire again not too much and I'm not applying too much pressure. If I apply too much pressure when I strip this, I'm gonna cause a nick, and then when I move it, it may snap, and then we're gonna have no connection. So that's gonna go behind here. And then I put my bend into it. I'm gonna screw it in. as tight as we can. Give it a little pull to make sure. Good. And I'm going to put these wires back to where they were. We've got our neutral in, our ground in. Now it's time for our circuit breaker. As I said, knowing your panel is always important. I know that this is a CH breaker because it's a CH panel. You can actually tell by the colour to make sure it matches. It is against code to install a different brand breaker. Um, to the brand of panel that you have and also it's probably not going to fit so we can see on this particular brand here that we're going to have this that slots in to our groove there I can show you on this one so it's easier so it holds there and then we're going to have these parts that slot onto the buzz bar itself to give it power gotcha. so now what we're going to do is click this in well first we're going to make sure it's turned off which it is you can see where it says off yep. We're going to slot it in, push, and then it's connected on. That's all we needed to do for that. Then we get our live wire, and again, as before, bend, 
measure, cutter excess, strip, not too much. We don't want to cut too much because again, we want to make sure there's no exposed copper. So just the smallest amount. What do you think that looks like? Half an inch? Yeah. And we've made sure before, that's how we do it. As we see there, that it's open for the wire to go in. Okay. So you see as we Pass screw it, it, it closes. Yep. Wanna make sure it's nice and open and easy to terminate the wire into. Gotcha. I'm gonna click that back on. Sometimes it's easy to slot it into the wrong part. So this is the most important one, obviously. The one you need to be the safest on, making sure it's tight, as tight as we can get it, and that we pull it to make sure it's so tight that the breaker will come out before the wire itself, which is what we want. Okay. Then we turn it on, and now we go to see if our um, receptacle is working. Are you right? Yeah. <laughs> Stay safe. So, with this particular brand of GFI, we're just gonna push it in. And now we can see that it's held. So now we put our tester in. And as we can see, the two lights are on. And the tester itself will tell you the correct wiring. And we can see the bottom there. Our correct wiring means that these two lights are on. So we plug it in. And our two lights are functioning. Perfect. And so, uh, under what circumstances will this trip or will the button pop every day after the GFI. So what I actually do to make sure that it's functioning correctly, this tester itself has a test button okay. to put a fault current on it and make sure that it trips. Gotcha. If water gets into electricity, this is its whole function. If water and electricity get in contact with each other, it will trip. We've installed our breaker, we've tested our circuit and we know it's good. We can see that we have installed the, uh, the new circuit breaker at our bottom left here. So we need to remove this, which we just take our grips on and bend a few times until it comes off. So we now have our opening for the breaker. We also need to label it. Garage GFI receptacle back wall back wall sounds good back wall and then reinstall our panel cover mm -hmm. I'll put the screws at the bottom there be uh, extra careful when you put this back on again metal cover make sure that when you put it on you don't accidentally push any of the test buttons and turn some power off people don't like it when that happens and then we're gonna hold it in place. Line up our screws. I'm just gonna do it half so that it's on there and holding it so that I don't pin it too much. And I still have some movement for the other screws that I need to install. particular panel wasn't installed amazingly because the bottom left of it is sticking out of the uh, sheetrock a bit so okay. it's going to be difficult well it, it will make it look as uh, as good as it did when it was first installed <laughs> now that we've got all four screws on we can tighten them in we are good to go new circuit installed turned on labeled working receptacles done you're good to go. Looks great. So um, we've shown you today how we would do an installation of this sort. Uh, I am a licensed contractor in the state of North Carolina. I've been doing this for 17 years. I'm very comfortable working in panels. I highly recommend anyone who doesn't have a license or is unskilled to not go ahead and work inside of a panel such as this. There is a lot of risk. There is very easy for you to get hurt, very easy for you to cause damage to any of the existing electrical installation. 
but this is a DIY video on how to approach these topics if you're qualified to do so or just for your information, basically. Exactly. All right. Thanks, Harrison. Thank you.